like with many things in science, uh, although they're presented oftentimes as uh, you, you know indisputable facts, uh, or, or they you know they've been proven beyond a shadow of a doubt. Uh, there are things like that, but a, a lot in science, uh, if you dig deeper into it, it, it is based on some assumptions that uh, oftentimes have not been fully proven, you know, so that uh, any theory w within science, it, it, it has to be taken with a degree of skepticism, uh, you know, critical evaluation, uh, it, it, because because of the nature of science, it can never really prove anything 100%. There's always alternative explanations. Uh, and so uh, this is particularly the case with the uh, so-called discovery of the accelerating expansion of the universe. Um, you know, it's based on some assumptions uh, uh, that um, I think have not been uh, fully um, uh, validated uh, and there are alternative explanations for what you're seeing uh, that would not uh, require the uh, uh, recession or, or expansion of uh, object galaxies away from each other. Um, so in particular, uh, in actually recent measurements, they have found uh, discrepancies uh, in the, the values for, for what they had predicted for the, the expansion. Uh, you know, some of the latest measurements uh, have shown that, that, uh, that there were serious discrepancies that um, the, the values uh, for, for what had been uh, uh, calculated and predicted for the expansion rate uh, were off uh, because of some of the underlying assumptions about how those expansion rates were being calculated. Uh, and, and so, you know, some of these assumptions are uh, you have to know the absolute or intrinsic brightness of the object that you're looking at, which is very difficult to do. Uh, and then you, you have to uh, estimate its distance from you, uh, which is very difficult to do. Um, and uh, both of those are prone to, to some degree of inaccuracy, uh, where you're not going to be getting the, the uh, uh, best uh, or the a true accurate, accurate value for either of them. Uh, and so, you know, of course, uh, looking at the galaxies around us, you, you do see this uh, predominant redshift. Uh, and what Holt and Orp uh, uh, pointed out uh, about this is that, um, well, th there could be alternative explanations uh, aside from an expansion. Uh, in particular, uh, it, uh, one of the, the things that, that were suggested was called the tired light theory. Uh, and it, it, it's a Doppler effect as well. But the idea is that if you have an object very far away from where you're receiving it, uh, the light uh, will start off uh, normal, like um, say blue shifted, uh, but uh, because of the long distance and the long duration of time, uh, it grows tired, like loses energy, becomes red shifted. Uh, and, and so when you observe that object, you, you see this red shift, uh, you might assume, well, it's red shifted because the object's moving away from me, but perhaps it's some function of the uh, um, uh, behavior of photons over long distances and long spans of time. Uh, that particular idea has ran into a number of problems. It's it, uh, any kind of uh, measurements that have been done uh, to, to detect or validate, verify that, that idea uh, have not. Uh, so it's kind of fallen by the wayside. But uh, one of the things that I really found interesting about 
uh, um, Harp and uh, uh, the, the other guys working on this is the idea of the uh, intrinsic redshift. Uh, and this was a, you know, it was a very interesting idea that uh, there are certain locations within the universe uh, where uh, the light emitted by a galaxy uh, will be different due to a, a, it being in a different intrinsic energy level. Uh, and I found this particularly fascinating because it draws a very strong parallel between galaxies, their behaviors and characteristics, and molecules or atoms. Uh, because if you have a, a, an excited atom, let's say, uh, it, it is going to emit a very high energy photon, whereas a, a lower energy uh, atom if it's uh, it excited it, it, uh, to a less degree, it will emit a lower energy photon. So that's like, you might have a blue photon versus a red photon, you know, so we would say one's blue shifted, one's red shifted. Well, you know, they were describing how that could be the case scenario with uh, galaxies. They enter into particular areas uh, within the universe. Uh, they, they change the energy level of the galaxy uh, and, uh, to, to observers outside of that region, it might appear that it's uh, red shifted or it's become blue shifted, uh, but it's not because of its, its uh, motion away or towards you. Uh, it's because of the intrinsic energy level of the galaxy itself. Uh, and, and, you know, it's a very interesting idea. And, and uh, David Wilcock actually explained how, uh, well, he, he kind of, uh, you know, what, what posed it as a question, what, what if we're moving into one of these, locations that has a, a different uh, uh, energy uh, transition value for the galaxy, uh, what is that going to do, uh, uh, particularly to us, to life on Earth? Uh, so, you know, it's, it's very interesting, but uh, what I, I would say probably is most closely our perspective on this uh, is that indeed, uh, the, the redshift is not necessarily due to expansion. Uh, in, in particular, if the universe is uh, inhomogeneous and anisotropic, uh, which is kind of what the, these, more, these ideas like intrinsic redshift are, are suggesting, uh, you know, it could have a, a, very, a directional movement, the universe itself. And this is seen in things like dark flow, uh, uh, the, the cosmological axis, uh, things like this. Uh, and so if there's a flow, you know, uh, 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 to the universe itself, it's not that it's expanding out, but, uh, you know, especially if it's like a double toroidal flow, uh, you know, if you look in either direction, it looks like everything's moving away from you, but it's just moving up to the poles and back into the center and out again, you know, a nice little double torus uh, vertex. Vortex, um, but uh, I don't think either that that uh, necessarily excludes the possibility of an expansion of space. It could be both and. Uh, uh, so you do have things like intrinsic redshift. You do have things like directional flow within the universe due to its, its uh, uh, anisotropic geometry or topology, uh, but you also have expansion. Is, is a good possibility, you know, and, and uh, uh, creating more space means that there, there's more information that can be encoded. Uh, and also uh, that probably draws new particles out of the vacuum uh, so that it maintains a constant density. Uh, so, so, you know, I, I kind of think that uh, it's a both end, that, that you do have expansion and some of the other characteristics that, that have been suggested.